What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and I'm here today with a new series that we're going to be taking a look at for the next couple days. I was fortunate enough to be graced with a review copy of the game and unfortunately it came a little bit late so I apologize for the late upload, I was hoping to get it up on launch day but alas, it did not happen that way so we're going to be taking a look at Cyanide Studios R Clash Legacy. For those among you who enjoyed the Dawn of War 2 playthrough, I've been assured and I've looked at some playthrough videos and it seems like this game is very, very close. It's an RTS that sort of has kind of an MMO vibe to it where you control all your different party members but it's in real time, you can active pause and throw abilities around and so I figured it'd be a nice addition to the channel considering as of lately there haven't been a whole lot of game releases that have been strategy related. A lot of the things coming out are shooters and things of that nature so let's get our adventure started off here. And as soon as that's gone, what does it say? The standard level of difficulty. Indeed, we will take that, for I am not brave enough or manly enough. I don't have enough chest hair for Ragnarok mode. It's just not there. They would test me at the gates and be like, where is your chest hair? And I'd be like, alas, I am bald, sir. All right, so I have not done a whole lot of research. This is going to be fairly blind for me. The artistry and everything that I've looked at with this game have been fairly gorgeous, if I had to make an assumption as of right now, but... Realistically, I think this game is going to be a lot of fun. I haven't looked at any reviews or anything of that nature, so hopefully this will function as a little bit of a review or a first look for those of you out there who don't know what the game is all about. I may start editing these load screens out in the future. Like I said, when I get these keys late, I don't get a lot of time to do a ton of research, unfortunately. It's just kind of like, whoa, let's get the video out. This is Arklash. The war between the Dark Lords of Acheron and the Barons of Alahan rages on. To finance the war, the Barons have gone into serious debt with the Goldmongers Guild. Many nobles have fallen behind in their payments, and the Guild has sent their wheel swords, expert warriors, and masters in the art of collecting their due. A standard core of four wheel swords finds itself deep in lion territory when a new war of a very different nature is declared. Wheel swords. Lakshai wants this bauble now. The patrons have authorized deadly force if needed. Oh, it'll be needed. Yes, what man in shiny armor doesn't like to show off his big sword? So, there's another type of force? Other than deadly? Don't worry about it. Right. If they so much as look at you funny, kill them. Patron Lakshai wants the relic brought to him before dawn. Everyone clear? In, out. Snick, snack, no muss, no fuss. Wheel swords all! Wheel swords all! It's always important to go hands in before a thing like this. Alright, so let's take a look at our characters. We've got Nella, who is apparently just kind of wandering around. And then it looks like we've got a device over here, and we're going to take a look at it. It looks like we've got some contextual menus, but I'm going to figure that out in just a moment. Oh, we broke it. And here are our lions. Let's take their heads as well. Stand down. We are sanctioned by the Goldmongers. All right, so the game has an active pause, like I said, and you should be able to spam, like, yeah, it's spamming the space bar like any other active pause game. Let me close off that tutorial really quickly. And let's take a look at what we can do with our characters. So we've got Naka here, who hopefully is named after what she does. We've also got some buttons. So we've got attack, we've got the Neuro Taunt, which costs 250 HP, oh that's unfortunate. And it taunts her targets for 25 seconds. We've got Vitae Treatment, which self-restores 200 HP and regenerates 200 over 20 seconds, all right. We've also got, let's see, what is this right here? Oh, it doesn't look like it's working. Well then, let's put her on attack. We've got Nella. She's got a Celestial Blow. After two seconds of incantation time, we deal... Yeah, let's do that. Cool. And what does Denzel have? I'm assuming he shoves bombs up people's asses and blows them up. If, if he's anything like the Denzel that I'm familiar with. He's got Cut Throat. 
which does 500 bleeding damage over 10 seconds. Okay, so it's a little bit of a dot. Hysteria of the God Rat. He increases his speed of attack by 30%, and his armor goes up. So it's a little bit of a buff in case he gets himself in trouble. Maybe we'll put him on this swordsman down here. Wendaru has the Star of Vitality. It's a directional shot and throws a magic star that restores HP to the unit that it hits. Enemies included. Oh, that could be a problem. And then Sacred Feast, where she taps 200 HP from an ally, but gains 50 MP. None of those are looking really useful, so let's see how the combat plays out. Oh god. That was pretty sweet. Let's see if we can do that lightning thing again. Who threw the lightning? It was her. Let's do another lightning blast. And Shazowie. Wow, that is the stuff right there. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Maybe... Oh, we have to target it. Okay. I was wondering maybe... <laughs> snicked. Well, that went okay. The relic is ours. Let's get out of here. I hope Patron Lakshai appreciates our efforts. The bravery of these lion fools was surprising. Attacking wheel swords of the guild. <laughs> All right, so that was our first little look at the way that the game runs so far, and I gotta say I'm pretty impressed. Everything feels fairly tight about the controls, and I am going to have to learn the hotkeys as we go through. That is the unfortunate consequence of me being a turn-based player normally. I do like that I have a panic button, though, in the space bar. That's the sort of thing that makes me very, very pleased. Alright, we're in a jungle now. I don't know why, but we're in a jungle. Some pretty water effects. I'm impressed by the graphics thus far as well. It's looking pretty nice. Oh, never mind. The temple was in the jungle. Alright. Explains. Standard formation. Don't let them flank us. Naka, block their charge. Wendaru, take position to fire. Some petty lord disagrees with the guild's claim on his inheritance. I call dibs on the fat one. I like that pretty necklace he wears. Cut the chat and do what needs to be done. All right, so we've started off in pause. And let me see. I think if we... Ah, okay, so we've got a context menu where we can look at everything about the unit that we're about to be fighting with. He's got Strength of the Lion, which means he inflicts a bunch of damage on a target. And it looks like it's also got his basic damage that he does through auto-attacking, his physical prowess, or his physical defense and his magical defense. That's pretty sweet. So it seems like they're not going to be so good against magic. We're probably going to want to lay down the Daka on them a little bit from off on the side. So let's go ahead... And I'm going to have her, does it cue these after I do them? No, okay. So let's move her over to there, and maybe a shift click? Ah, there it is. Okay, I can shift left click to set up a queue of actions that I'd like to have done. I'm going to have Naka move in. And it looks like it's already queued that up. After Naka goes in, I'm going to have her queue up a Necros taunt on him. Oh, that's not what I want. Hold on, let me... I can do this, I swear. There we go. Alright, and then for Denzel, let's take a look at this Archer of Alahan. The Archer of Alahan has Celerity. That means she can buff her own attack speed for 15 seconds. That's not too terrible. It doesn't look like she hurts that much, and she's about 50-50. So let's just put Denzel on her. Once Denzel's all in there, we'll take Wendaru, hold her off in the back. And we'll just keep her for heals, I think. She's a little bit redundant. Well, never mind. She's a bit redundant. She has a heal, but... You know, maybe it's like a second win type deal. Ooh, and there's a little bit of damage. She's off to the side, throwing that lightning bolt. Let's get another one queued up from Nella. I like that very much. So let's get that going. I, that works out pretty well. I like it. Maybe even just have her continue casting it. Oh, never mind. The enemy's down. Let's pause it for just a moment. I'd like to test out this heal here. And I think it said it heals the per first person it hits. So before we're in a mission critical battle, I'd love to throw this out here and just make sure that it does what I want it to. Cool. Very nice. Enjoyable. A crenulated or a crenulated relic. Is that the one we were looking for? Or what is that? Let's see here. I'm going to assume that the I key gives me what I want. Ah. Plus 2% magic damage. So that's probably going to be best used on Nella for now if we can. Where does that go? Off on this little symbol? Ah, gotcha. Can I pass it around, or is everybody's inventory shared? Let's find out. Everyone's inventory is shared, so I'm going to put that on my nuker, because I think it's more than likely going to benefit her more than anybody else. 
Let's take a look at what's going on down this road. I am liking the art style as well. I like that they haven't gone with the typical choice of going with like human adventurers, for example. We do have some humans in our group, but I do like that everybody appears to be like demi-humans or everybody appears to be mutants or they appear to be monsters of some sort. I like that a lot. It does sell the game a little bit better for me. Let's have everybody fall back into formation. Look at some of these right here. There's the codex. We've got a map, the inventory. Okay. Cool. Like I said, you'll forgive me for a moment. Ooh, never mind. We've got a bard of Alahan in the back. Let's take a look at him. He is very strong against magic, and he's weak against physical. He can throw Invocation of the Light at us, which inflicts 500 damage on all wheel swords that it hits. So we're going to want to spread out here. So let me see if I can get Naka into combat with him. And what I'd really prefer is maybe if she can taunt him as well. I'm going to put Denzel, I'm calling him Denzel from now on, just so, so nobody's like, he's, his name is Denzel. No, his name is Denzel. From now on, that's his nickname. I like to give things nicknames if you're new to the channel. Let's put our rogue, because he's dual wielding, he's got a crazy hat with a buckle. Let's put him over here on the Bard of Alahan. Once he's on the Bard of Alahan, let's have him slit his throat if we can. Other people, I'm going to have them spread out. I'm going to have Windaroo over here. We're going to put Nella right here so that we've got a nice gap in between everybody. Once she's moved into place, there's no point dropping her lightning on the Bard of Alahan. So we're going to put it on the first swordsman on the right. She's going to hang tight and she's going to heal anybody that gets nuked. And from there, I think I'm happy with the decision. Ooh, and there goes the first lightning bolt. Looks like we've got a ball of light that's moving slowly towards us. The game did do us a service right there, and it auto-paused the game as that was flying out. I didn't know if you saw it, because as a reflex, when I play strategy games with auto-pause, I auto-unpause when they do little feedbacks like that. So there was kind of a little bit of a chop there, but it did pause the game for me when that ball of light came out. So what I'm going to do is it looks like it's headed for Wendaroo. I'm going to get her out of the way if I can. Let's move Wendaroo. Oh, and Denzel's looking a little hurt too. Unfortunate. Let's get Denzel back in and on. I'm going to keep Denzel there. Naka, let's have her use Vitae treatment and then go back to fighting with that unit as soon as she can. Let's put another lightning bolt on that swordsman. After that, let's see. How much does that hurt? Okay, never mind. She's got mana. I didn't know if it was going to hurt her or not to do that. And I think that, I've, that leaves me about happy with my decisions. Looks like she's throwing out some kind of, or the bard is throwing out some kind of feedback or damage there. Let's throw, does Nella have another one lined up? Nella? Nella might be low on mana, but everybody's dead now. Treacherous knights of light. <laughs> they fight like cowards, attacking without good reason. If Lord Mornstar has sent troops to kill us, he disagrees with the guild's claim on his property. We need to escape these estates and find a goldmonger outpost. There's a guild house three days walk from here. Two days if we walk through the night. But we can be off Mornstar lands in an hour if we head northwest. Mornstar is a fool. The goldmonger guild will bleed his house dry for attacking a wheel sword sanctioned core. The treasure in the crypt was ours to claim. He should have paid his debts. This has gone beyond words and contractual threats. Blood has been spilled here. We must flee to safer grounds and contact our patron Lockshy. Very well, Comrade Curly Hat. She says we should go to the northwest and talk to Lockshy, it sounds like. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Avoid directional projectiles. Yeah, go figure. Yeah, I've already got that one. All right, we got some treasure. Cool, cool. All right, and there's a broken relic over here. Let's take a look and see what that's going to do for us. The Broken Relic increases the amount of healing received, so that's more than likely going to go on our tank, Naka. Let's go ahead and throw that on her so that she can get healed a little bit better. It looks like everybody recovers their full health after every single combat, which is a cool feature. It saves you a little bit of the busy work of having to rest or whatever it is that the rest of the game is out there. The rest of the games out there kind of require you to do. We do have a pretty sweet map here. All in all, I'm really liking the care that they put into the game. From what I've seen in this short little play... I like it. Oh, and we've got enemies here. And I did the auto-pause thing again. Enemy elites. So it looks like she's got a bluish hue that's going to kind of signify her as being an ultimate badass. Let's get Naka into combat just like we did before. We're going to throw her taunt on that secondary unit right there. I believe what I'd like to do, let's have a look at this elite archer. 1,000 HP. 
strong against physical, but not so great against magic. Still like a half resistance if those numbers are a percentile. I don't think they are. And celerity. So she's going to be able to cause some problems, maybe knock some heads a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is we're just going to have people dogpile for now, and maybe I'll have Nella focus on the archer. Let's pull... Yeah, let's pull Windaroo back to right here so that she has clear throws at everybody. And it looks like redirect skills, which are being readied. Okay, well we can use... Oh, never mind, it's Naka's taunt does that. Well then, what we'll do is we'll see if we can taunt that. Gotcha. I don't know what the... Really... I guess taunting can actually redirect a... T so basically what taunting does in most games is if they've already started the targeting, taunting is not going to save you from that blow. You're still going to take it because the enemy isn't taunted yet. However, apparently in Arc Clash Legacy, if the enemy is mid-cast, you can taunt them to change the target in the middle of the blow. Now, knock is a little low on health, so what I'd like to do is use Vitae treatment really quickly. Let's have Denzel throw a little damage on that unit. We're going to have... Nella, throw another lightning bolt over on the archer. Wendaru, on the other hand, is probably going to help out, throw a little bit. She has those spinny star things, those chakram looking things. I'm going to have her throw them at the archer if she can. A little heal off there. Yeah, I already used it, so we should be okay. He should be bleeding out now. Nella's a little bit low on MP, so she's not going to be too useful from here on out. Denzel is on cooldown. Sacred Feast I don't think is going to help us too much right here. Star of Vitality as well because she's impeded. I can't really get at her. Let's move Windaroo over to there so I can throw a heal that way if I need to. The Hot Effect, the Heal Over Time Effect, has managed to stabilize her as we're going through, which is good. And that final Swordsman should just fall into place as the combat goes through. The Ring of the Bear. Some bear is going to be very sad that I have bogarted his ring. Let's take a look at it through the inventory menu here. It looks like it gives us physical armor and increases the healing that has been dealt out. So that's definitely a healer ring. Let's find Windaru here. And then we'll just put that into her. Right now, these, this gear is not going to be so great in the early game, obviously. Hopefully later on we'll get some super epic loot. Some things that will make us look cooler. Give us some awesome auras. Maybe summon some chicken and beer that we can eat along the way. I always like my gear to have secondary summons. We've got a few more enemies over here. A bunch of bards. This could get kind of nasty. Let's send in Naka and Denzel. Nella is going to start, I believe these guys are fairly strong against anything we could throw at them, so let's get her going against the first swordsman. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Cancel you. No, not what I wanted. There we go. We'll get a lightning bolt going there, a lightning bolt going there. Wendaru, I want her to be able to throw a heal on everybody since hers is directionally based. And of course, we can manage stacked actions. I've already got that down. And hopefully, I'll be able to keep an eye on a lot of the skill. Oh my god, that was enormous. What did that do? Do I have a combat log anywhere? See, like, giant effects like that, I'd love to see what they actually accomplish. But we'll let the combat go as it stands right now. Nobody looks inherently terribly wounded at the outset of the fight, which is very, very good. I'd prefer that we stay unwounded. We need to throw our first heal out here, so I'm going to do that. There's the first heal. As soon as that guard is down, I'm going to go ahead and take Naka, and we're going to taunt... Looks like they're readying something over there, which means I'm going to taunt it really quickly, make sure that it hits my tank. I'm going to take Denzel over there. She's a little low on mana, but she... Oh, not enough. Never mind. Well, I suppose I'll just put her on auto attack duty with Wendaru. Let's consider maybe after that stacking another heal for herself. There it is, and so she should have a hot effect on her from here on out, just getting her health back. Oh, no. We've got a giant fireball thingy that I should have gotten the hell out of the way of. Let's throw another heal over there. What would you do there it is. And can I select these guys? No, the number keys do not select these guys, as I can tell right now. I can select their abilities with like the W keys if they're already clicked on, but we've got to level up now. Let's take a look at our character sheets, and maybe there's a way to do something with it. Anyway. Looks like we've got a recycle key over here. Oh, we can salvage gear. That's going to be pretty sweet. Got biographies for every character. Very nice. I suppose we're probably going to have to rest or something to do the level up. I'm not seeing any prompt or anything that's jumping out at me. Explosions of gear. My favorite types of explosions. The ones that do not directly affect my characters and, in fact, end up benefiting them. Let's take a look through our loot pouch right now. 
and figure out what kind of goodies we've wrangled for ourselves. So we've got a Ring of the Crescent, which is going to give us extra armor versus magic, and it's going to increase our multi-critical hit. What is multi-critical hit? Let's see if we can find that over here on the stat sheet. However, I don't see it. Maybe it's character specific. Maybe... I'm a little antsy about allocating something to somebody that I don't know what it does, but let's look at everything else, too. We've got a rare earring, an earring of the fire. That's going to increase armor universally, and it's going to increase or decrease the duration of reduction effects. I probably want to put that on the tank so that she becomes even more tanky. So let's throw that on her, and it looks like she's now got a lot more armor. I do like how the stats here, they automatically update as you're increasing your gear. It's not one of those things that you have to wonder about where your stats stay the same, but you've got these things stacked. It just ticked up all on its own right there. Very cool. The other thing we've got is the white water earring. That's going to go on Nella because I want her to be able to regenerate a little bit quicker. She's been running out of mana every single fight. Maybe it's because I just like mages and I love to use mages. Explodey things that the mages like to call down on people always make me happy, but I'm going to throw it on her. We've got the chaotic relic here, which is a rare relic that gives armor, magic, and healing done. Let's consider for just a moment... Throwing that maybe on Naka. It seems like a nice thing to have on her. I'm sorry, not Naka. We want that on Windaroo. There we are. Or maybe not. We've already... Yeah, let's throw that on Windaroo. Get out of there. There we go. To unequip that first. Oh, I was going to different slots. Okay. It's not healing received. It's healing done. So I'm clicking the wrong people here. I'm making myself look foolish. There it is. All right, so Naka now. I'm going to fix that right there. Awesome. So everything's looking a mighty fine. Fine, just fine. Let's move on, and it looks like we're going to the northeast now. We wanted to go to the northwest. Maybe we're taking an alternative path. It'll be all right. It's a nice scenic walk through the forest. One of those never hurt anybody. We could do a quick save. A favorite feature of mine. I actually like If games don't have a quick save, it's pretty depressing to me. I quick save like crazy. You are doomed, wheel swords. Lay down your weapons. Return her to me, and I'll spare your wretched lives. You are in breach of contract with the Goldmongers Guild, Lord Monstar. We are in our rights to recover what is ours from your estate. His soldiers are moving to surround us. They're going to attack. We cannot lay our weapons down, even if we so wanted. We are wheel swords, bound by blood contract to the guild. The relic is confiscated. Take up your complaints with our patrons. I see no patrons here. Insolent curs. These are my lands. Kill them. Kill them all. Alrighty, well we've got a dangerous opponent right here. This is apparently the Lord Mornstar we've been talking about, although in the dialogue there he said her, which I find to be sort of interesting considering all we did was loot a relic, so I'm assuming we've got some kind of sentient relic in our grasp. Let's take a look at Mornstar and figure out what he's good against. He's very good against physical. He's not so good against magic though, which means instantaneously, I'm going to queue up as many lightning bolts on this guy as I can. So there it is. Three lightning bolts, and I think that should tap out most of my MP on her. With Naka, we're going to go ahead and... Actually, what is her other ability there? Escape. Ah, it's a knockdown. Okay, let's put Naka in range. Naka, I want to be standing here just in case so she can kind of distract anybody here. Denzel, because he's so strong against melee, I think I'm going to put Denzel on the archer. And then Windaroo is going to take up a central position right here so that she can heal anybody that needs to be healed. Oh, maybe put her over there. Alright, so the combat is underway. Let's get Cutthroat on Archer of Alahan. After we drop a couple lightning bolts on her, it might be worthwhile to get the hot rolling now. So let's do that. So her hot is now rolling. It looks like he's targeting somebody with something, so maybe I should taunt just to make sure. There it is. Let's go ahead and throw a heal with Wendaru because she's hurting pretty good. There we are, hurting fairly well if we wanted to be grammatically accurate. Captain Morinstar has immuni immunized himself against all forms of damage. Alright. Well then, it says Denzel has unlocked a skill that allows him to break through this. Mystic Theft. I suppose we will use that as the tutorial prompts us to break his shield. So let's do that. And there it is. We have looted his shield and he's now taking damage again. Denzel managed to kill off his archer. I think I'm going to have Denzel come back around. Oops, was I firing another spell there? I think I was. Let's start blowing up this swordsman maybe. Let's have Denzel shift over to this unit. I'd prefer him to be right there before he shifts over to the unit. And then what we'll do is we'll have Windaroo come over here so that she's always got line of sight on whoever she needs to heal. 
Okay, now plasmatic silica. It looks like that increases her armor. Let's increase that really quickly. And then with Denzel, I'm going to give him Hysteria of the God Rat. Just so everybody's using the buffs they've been giving. It looks like Windaroo's taking a bit more damage. I'm sorry, Naka. So we're going to throw a heal on Naka really quickly. There it is. And she's got four seconds until she can put her hot back up on herself. No pride has the little man. Just like a lord to flee when a battle is lost. I don't like this. Even Mornstar is not stupid enough to believe he can take on the guild. It's not the first time a Benny Noble has contested a contract. All we need to do is survive long enough and he'll be dead or indebted before week's end. We could always give him back the relic. Hmm? It's just some silly old orb. The guild will get it back in the end with double the interest. Our orders were to take it. End of story. Lakshai left no room for negotiation or barter in his command. I will not give it back. We're not giving the relic to those fools. We'll never get our golden links by running away from drooling rabbits. Put those fangs back, or I'll be forced to kiss you. I love the fire in your eyes when you're angry. Enough talk. We keep the orb. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> Little man has game. That's pretty sweet, though. I always like my goblins and my gnomes and my halflings to have game. Let's see here, there are seven types of effects, and they can all be removed, stolen, or otherwise bothered. Okay, and it looks like they're color-coded as well, so yellow spells are increased spells, green spells support, white spells are just general, black spells are CC and control, violet reduce are debuffs, blue are anti-magic and red are damage. Alright, I like how they've done everything they can to organize the gameplay. There is something to be said about the overall feng shui of a game, and I use that term very lightly right um, here. Shouldn't we be killing something? Yes, we probably should, Denzel, but at the moment I'm explaining things. I like how they've color color coded things. It makes life easier for the player. It looks like they've taken into account, if you look at the buttons there, they're all color coded, so it looks like they've taken everything into consideration when designing the game. Thus far, I'm very impressed, and I am looking forward to getting further down the line with the game. My name is Splattercat, and I think this is the point at which I'm going to break this episode off. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the first episode of our R Clash Legacy playthrough. I hope that it worked as a bit of a functional review for you, or at least you managed to get yourself a little bit to grips with how the game functions and how everything looks. It feels very polished, and I'm pleased with it thus far. I am very surprised, to say the least. I'll see you guys next time, and take care out there, everybody.